Now, it all matters how this is measured. When, when this, is, this number is given out, it's given out by the government, usually by economists who calculate it. They'll survey firms, they'll count workers, they'll look at who's working, who's not working, and they have various sources of data that they get this from. Now, this leads to a criticism of how it is measured. Just like you might have seen that, that GDP is criticized because we're counting spending. You can enjoy life, you can have a good life without spending money. Or we talked about measuring inflation. People don't buy the same stuff, and you have one inflation. This single percentage number, usually either for a country or a state, sometimes a city, all criticizes how this is measured. We talked about who is unemployed. But if, if you choose how you pick these numbers, you're going to get a different percentage. One big criticism of this is it takes one hour to be, uh, to be employed. Does that really count all of the bad things about not working? Does your life fundamentally change if you go from zero hours a week to one hour a week? Probably not. And there's a term for this. It's called underemployment. There's two kinds of underemployment. Under One is if your skills are higher than the job requirement. You can picture someone with a PhD in literature working at a coffee shop. They have a job. They can be working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, but they have a PhD. Their skills are higher than the job requirement. Therefore, they are underemployed. And the other one is a little bit simpler. Your, your hours are less than the job requires. So you wish you were working full time, which in the US is usually 40 hours a week, sometimes it's 30. But if you're working 15 hours a week, you would love to work 40. You are underemployed. And that really shows up here. This unemployment rate isn't going to measure your job satisfaction. It's not going to measure your quality of life. It's just measuring if you work an hour a week or not. You could be working thoughtful. You could be working 40 hours a week or one hour a week. It does not change this number. A lot of people look at that and say that because of that, this unemployment rate is too low. All right. Secondly, the second criticism is the labor force. People drop out of the labor force. This denominator is going to shrink. All right. But what happens if somebody is looking for a job and quits looking? They don't quit their job. They actually quit being unemployed. This unemployment rate is going to drop because they drop out of the labor force. All right? So there's actually a term for this. It's called the discouraged worker. That's someone, like I said, who has stopped looking for work because they're unable to find a job. They are no longer unemployed. You think, well, somebody stopped being unemployed. That's good. It's actually bad. So this number is going to go down if something bad happens. So this number is not going to reflect what we want it to reflect. We generally view high unemployment as bad and low unemployment as good. In this case, discouraged workers make lower unemployment bad. Right? And another thing that we've actually seen a lot, especially after the Great Recession, is a lot of people lost their jobs fairly close to retirement. Maybe they're 55, 60, 63 years old. They can't retire until they're 65. You would actually see people going on disability. They, and, and they would retire early from the labor force because it was, they were unable to find a job that close to retirement age. Right, so in, in the Great Recession, we've actually seen that this unemployment rate go down for two reasons why people would drop out of the labor force. So, you hear a lot of the criticism. You sometimes you'll hear, and this is a very politically charged number, during the 2012 election, the unemployment rate dropped. Some people said that it was uh, politically motivated to make the economy look better than it was. And you heard a lot of criticism about how this was calculated. Now, you, you would hear this actually not just the last time with the last president. You, you would see criticism regardless of who's in office because 
there's a lot to criticize with this number, more so possibly than with GDP or with inflation. So you do hear people oftentimes saying that this is not the correct unemployment rate. Now, to be technical, the number you hear most of is called U3. And so when you hear the unemployment rate announced, and business people do follow this announcement closely. They make business decisions based on this. They make investment decisions based on this. Because they're looking to see how well the economy is performing so they can plan accordingly. Now, U3 is the term we give to this official unemployment rate. But there's another number out there sometimes people talk about and they view it as more accurate. It's called the U6 unemployment rate. This captures a lot of different things, but it has more emphasis on underemployment and it has more emphasis on people that are called marginally attached workers. It's basically people who aren't looking all that hard. They're still looking, but they can take a break from looking uh, as much. Uh, the term for that is marginally attached workers. So U6 has a little bit more emphasis on capturing some of these bad things. And so because it captures more bad things in the number, U6 is going to be higher. When this U3 rate was 9%, U6 was something like 18%. So some people call it the true unemployment rate. And like I said, people do sometimes will criticize. Uh, generally speaking, if, if the politicians are people you don't agree with, you'll tell them, or you'll say that, you're, that their unemployment rate is wrong. But for the most part, this is the number that's officially announced. And so every month when the numbers come out, business people around the country will follow what are called the you know, jobs numbers or the unemployment numbers. Sometimes you'll see the stock market go up or down accordingly. Uh, and sometimes you'll see people choose to hire or maybe lay off based on these numbers. So we mentioned that 7.8 or 8% unemployment is too high. All right? Now, of those, of that 8%, I mentioned that 5% of that is always going to be there. Right? That's that natural rate. 